Evening YouTubers. So, I should say free software fans, but we're going to have to look at how you're editing software and how you're editing files. At least simple text files, because I'm confident that the majority of you are not doing it with the most efficient tool possible. Now, when I first started using uh, GNU Plus Linux and other Unix-like systems, I would use Nano or its BSD um, ancestor, shall we call it, Pico. And the truth of it is, is that they Nano and Pico are good for uh, those people who are coming from the Win Windows ecosystem. Those people who have used, um, you know, the what you see is what you get type editors. I guess um, maybe people who have used the likes of Notepad. Okay, and a lot of people use Notepad for jotting down this and that, um, but it does not have to the best of my knowledge, and I'm not a daily nano user anymore, I used to be, but it just really doesn't have the tools um, needed to do the, the job. At least from my perspective, it, it doesn't. And I write um, software as a hobby and uh, I do it, you know, daily. Also write software or scripts at my place of employment. And, um, I write that in the VBE as opposed to Vim. VBE is a Visual Basic editor for VBA for applications. And, uh, you know, it's got some conveniences, but in my view, Vim, which is, you know, based on the VI, um, yeah, it's, you know, well, it's the ancient approach. It's the tried and true approach. Now, this is not... Um, this is not something that's fleeing Emacs. I'm not looking for a flame war or anything like that. Um, you know, you want to go use Emacs, be my guest, because, you know, you're probably going to be efficient in that. I use Vim, you know, every day, virtually, and um, it, for me, it's efficient. So, without any further ado, um, let's take a look at, first of all, um, some of the limitations that I find that you get with Nano. Let's see if Nano's installed. Okay, it is. So, first of all, um, actually I find myself trying to do Vim command straight away. Um, let's just exit that. Actually, we cancel that. Exit, no. Right, um, I'm gonna go and um, go into my programming environment. So, let's have a look. Um, dot so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start programming. Okay. So and it just takes me to where I want to go. And let's just say we're going to go um, and we'll just I suppose we can just edit a working program at the moment. So Right, now that's Vim doing that. Let's have a look at Nano. So something that I wasn't kind of used to with Vim and it didn't seem to do it, maybe it has always done it, but um, context, context highlighting. And you've got all these shortcuts down below, um, but you know, I kind of feel they're not that efficient. And I know that sounds, you know, kind of pretty subjective, but I'm going to show you something like, I can't even, like, let's have a look, control K. Okay. Yeah, so I can do that, which is, uh, I'm not going to do that. But if I zoom, right, and I just start, like, I can just go and just X that, and then I can undo it as well, okay? I can delete individual lines like that. I can undo like that. I can delete an individual line. 
navigate down and paste it. In fact, I can go three paste and do that if I wanted to. Not that I'm gonna do that for iStream because you only need one. Let's just undo that, see? And we're back straight away. And I could do control redo and I could go three undo. Do you see that? Straight away, we're back where we need to be. Now, that's just the start of it. Um, I guess what makes um, Vim in particular so powerful um, is its command line. In other words, I can change the way Vim operates uh, very, very easily. And what you should probably know at this point is that Vim has, I think, three modes of operation. You've got insert, visual, and you've also got the command mode, which is the main mode that you should be in if you're editing text. So let's just say, um, hypothetically speaking, I wanted to repeat this hash at the start of all of these. I'm not sure why, but let's just say I wanted to. In fact, how about we do something useful? How about we just comment all of those out in one fell sweep? So what I do is I can press Control V, right, and go like that and select them all. And then I can press Shift Insert to go into the special, what I call a special insert mode, and I press that. Now it looks like it's only done that line, but I press Escape, but getting out of insert mode, and voila, okay, and it does it. And if I want to undo all that, I can do that straight away. So it's just one example, okay. You might also notice that I have um, a couple of custom settings going on. So if I go okay, so that means that when I oh that doesn't even work. Let's go to tab stop. Look at you can see how those those tabs have been in, you know visually indented further. So I can change that and look at that I went back to my previous command by pressing the up button and I can go back to that. The other thing too I didn't tell you about is I'm navigating using the um, I'm using the uh, mainly the K and the J and K buttons but also the L to move right and the H to move left. Um, I think I could probably go yeah like that and I just pressed 4 uh, L which made me move right. Now that sounds funny saying H, J, K and L but what you need to realize is that H, J, K and L are actually all together and they're actually where you put your fingers when you're typing. So when you're in command mode, it works very, very nicely. The other thing too is I've got some pretty cool features like you can go to the next word, next word, next word. You can go um, to the uh, end of the line straight away. I can go back to the start of the line. Okay, I don't know if I can... Yeah, that's not going to work. I tried three... Uh, oh, three dollar. Oh, what did that do? Three dollar took me to some crazy end of the line. But anyway, I can also just get out of there. Uh, another thing too, um, so that's just showing you around the command mode, but also there's this other command mode. So I can turn, um, I can turn uh, numbers off, so line numbers. So I can just go set new new no new, which means no number, okay, and then I can go set new and bring them back, okay, so yeah, not only that, we've got the nice context, oh sorry, we've got the nice language highlighting, which uh, seemingly we get with Nano as well, it's uh, very aware by the way, so if I go um, Vim, um, Vim, you can see here it handles bash highlighting just as well as any other. So I'm pretty sure I can do Python and the whole box and dice. But the other thing too is that Vim has an extensive um, it has an extensive plugin system. Now not as extensive as Emacs, but there's still some pretty decent things. Like you can have a like a, in the side pane here, you can actually have a file explorer, and I might demo that uh, some other time. Um, I suppose the thing for Vim is that it keeps your fingers where they should be naturally placed and makes some common sense choices like I can just take that letter out, I can delete a whole word by pressing DW, okay, I can delete two words, two DW, um, 
I can delete the whole line by pressing DD. I can go D percentage. No, that's not right. D percentage. No. Just bear with me while I try and get my bearings. No. Percent. Yep. So percent D will kill it. Um, so get rid of everything. Um, I can also do a find and replace. So if I wanted to change books to bricks, I could do that just like this. So I can go um, to bricks and G just means I'm going to do it across the whole line if it finds it multiple times. And there you go, obviously lower case in this case, but you can see the changes that I made there. You can just undo those straight out. So for me and um, some of the professional software developers I know, uh, Vim is a fantastic option uh, when it comes to uh, editing files and uh, doing software development. Um, you can control Z out of it, just like that. And if I wanted to compile main program, um, and there's some dependencies that main program um, has. So I could just do main program 2.cpp book type.cpp. And there you go, it's compiled. Uh, and then I, if I really want to, I can go back to foreground and I can begin my editing again. I can split and edit that way, or I can close that, and then I can split right that. I could specify the file I want to. So say I wanted to look at the, um, the header file which defines the API for book type. Um, I could do this. I can go v split book type dot h. I just press tab then. I didn't type that in. I just press tab. And then we can actually see that come up uh, nicely on the left. And once I'm done with it, I can just press Q and it closes it and I'm back to where I was. Uh, again, that can be done multiple times. So I could just do this. I can go v split and then I can do split and then I can press Control w to move to the next window. Control w and then I could do um, split and there you go, I can be editing four files uh, at the same time. So, as you can see uh, from the outset, Vim, at least the improved version, and I should probably show you that while we're at it. If I go Vim like that, you can see here VI improved. So it's not VI, it's the improved version, latest version actually, I think. Uh, we've just gone to version 8. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you can see it's a very, very functional uh, program. Uh, and it's a cross-platform program. There is a GUI variety of it called GVIM. You can get that across, um, uh, you know, GNU plus Linux or any of the other Unixes. Um, you can get it on Windows. I imagine you can also, uh, given that it's a Unix, get it on um, Apple as well, Apple OS X. So, um, uh, perhaps one of the things I should really show you where it comes into its own um, is, let's just say I've got um, touch, touch, um, actually, in fact, what we'll do is echo, get out of this, um, make directory test, test, right, now I'm going to touch, oh, I won't do that, uh, we'll vim file1.txt, uh, file2.txt. Two, two okay, so I'm going to go, um, Oh, this is a, this is file one, and I'm just going to yank that line, so double Y, and I'm going to quit it, oh, quit it, and then, okay, so just wait, um, two files to edit, I probably just did that slightly incorrectly there, oh, file, oh, Okay, so now I'm going to vim file2.txt. I've lost my file2. I just didn't save it, I think. I could have saved it correctly. Vim file2 select. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste. Do you see that? I exited out of the program and it maintained its buffer between executions of the program.
So Vim, in my view, is a very, very powerful editor. I think anyone who's doing um, any sort of professional um, software development uh, should consider using it. It's not an IDE, um, so you shouldn't expect it to behave as such. Um, but it is a good supplement to uh, an IDE if you need to do quick text editing and that sort of thing where you want to keep your hands on the keyboard. Um, there's a whole bunch more functionality um, than uh, that, I'm, that I'm showing you there. Let's, um, if you want to find out more, you can just go to the Vim Shortcuts page and you'll find, oh, well, there's some shortcuts here, but plenty of websites there will have all the shortcuts. There'll be documentation for Vim, uh, a great Vim cheat sheet. You can see some of the things that no doubt that I've shown you. You can see the HJKL thing there, inserting pending text, marking text, which is visual mode, which I really didn't show you much of, but like, for example, one of the things I could do here is let's just go here and I'm going to paste that a hundred times right now I'm going to select that and now I'm actually going to replace file 1 with file 2 in this um, and I'm going to say that is file 2 so I'm going to go S this is file 1 to this that is file 2 and you can see it did that only where I selected it. Again, very, very smart program with its uh, regex search. So anyway, guys, I suggest you take a look at it. Um, and please, you know, just remember that although Nano comes with the majority of distributions, Vim is just a very short install away, and it will save you a lot of time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you'd like to get more of this content, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.